Parks are out here, and my clock says 6.30. I'd like to call this meeting of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to order. Can we start with the roll call, please? Aaron Ranger is not here. Scott Connor? Present. Thomas Davis is not here. Uh, Paige Lewis? Here. Sam Libby? Here. Nicholas Navello? Here. And Council Liaison, Sean McCoy? Present. Um, so our, well, do we do, we don't need to do the minutes first? Do the board organization first? Yeah, do okay. it first. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, it is time to elect a new chair. So I would like to open the nominations, and I share with everyone that I do not wish to continue as chair, so I appreciate people's support for the last couple of years, but I'm excited for someone new to help this role, so. Okay. We're open to any nominations. Well, I'd like to nominate Nicholas if he's interested in being board chair. I think he did a great job as vice chair. Thank you. Do I say anything? Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 I feel weird nominating myself. No. But, yeah. I think we probably need a second. Yeah, I think you have no chance. A second nominating Thank you. Person. Are there any other nominations? It could have inflicted on somebody who's not here. But <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was, I was also going to nominate you, so yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think given that, all those in favor of Nick as our next chair, please say aye. 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 I don't see anyone opposed. Great. So we also need a vice chair. So we need nominations for a vice chair. <laughs> I'll up my, okay. I'll, I'll nominate Sam and we're in place to Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'll have a string of string ball. Is there a second yeah, for second. those? Yeah, yeah. Very you second. don't know the amount of people work as well. <laughs> I'm se I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Great. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. I'll switch seats with you. Oh, wow. This is right. Like official. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect friends to do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ceremony or playing in music or some sort of like. Yeah. yeah. This is your show. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Let's move on to approval of this month's agenda. Are there any changes to this month's agenda? Okay. Request it. I'll move to approve the agenda. Do you have a second? Second. All those yes. favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Well, not. All your pent up motions paid. <laughs> 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 yeah, right? You said we'll give her a few. Yeah, right. That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to approval, approval of previous month's minutes. Any requests for changes to the previous month's minutes? And I realize that some of us haven't reviewed. <clears throat> I, I didn't know I was supposed to be here. Uh, they told us January, so yeah. that's yeah. Oh, yeah. for the yeah. no, no, So when it said not present. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, I didn't, then we didn't expect you. No, to be I just wanted to make sure. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's not present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other changes? No. Okay, we have a motion to approve the. Last month's minutes. Yeah, I'll move to approve the minutes from mid December 11th, meeting. The second. All those in favor? Aye. All righty. Moving right along. Do we have any public event to be heard for today? We do not. Any public event to be heard? No. Okay. Easy enough. Wow, we're flying through this. Okay, next, next up is old business, and the old business on the agenda that I'm looking at here is no old business. Correct. Is that correct? Okay, fantastic. All right, then moving on to new business, new business, and you have plenty of options for this. So first up is parks proposed municipal code changes, and who can be driving this? Yep. Well, uh, awesome. Bryce. If I, if I could really quickly just start this quick, I think it's one of the things that, you know, Jeff and I spend a lot of time trying to make sure that we are respecting this group's time and the value that we hopefully you feel like you're adding to the process in the city. And this is one of the things too, when we have things going to council that really we like to vet in front of this group, it really is an important piece for us. I appreciate you guys sitting through this, a lot of stuff here, but again, I think you that represent the community that really helps us 
look ahead to see what we may be facing as we, we get up in front of a, a bigger audience. I appreciate your time on these type of items. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bryce Irby. I'm the Senior Parks and Open Space Ranger for the City of Longmont. Um, what I've got for you today is about a dozen municipal code amendments that I'd like to make. Um, some ranging from no big deal to maybe a, a bigger change, but nothing crazy, I promise. Um, so if you have questions or want me to expound on why we came to this decision, happy to do so. I think the easiest way to read this would be through my council com that I've got pulled up. So this is for chapter 13 municipal code, which is the public lands violations that we as park rangers enforce. Um, the first one is to modify the definition of paddlecraft for aquatic nuisance species prevention. Right now, the definition of paddlecraft is a little outdated. Um, and it doesn't quite meet what the state standard is for what needs an ANS inspection and what doesn't. So it's just cleaning up that language to make sure everyone's on the same page of does my watercraft need to be inspected or am I exempt from inspection? So that's a, that's a pretty straightforward one. It's going to be So right now, um, I'm going to amend it to say paddlecraft means any hand launched, non motorized vessel that does not require an aquatic nuisance species inspection. For example, a paddleboard, a kayak, a canoe. So the key words there are hand launched and non motorized. Um, if you put a motor on anything, it needs an inspection. And if it's launched by a trailer, it needs inspection. So if you're launching by hand, doesn't have a motor, don't need an inspection. Any, any further <coughs> questions or clarifications on that one? Any motor, I assume? Electric motor or grass motor? No. Yeah. I tell people if you put a motor on your front door, then your front door has to be inspected. It doesn't matter what it is, as soon as you put a motor on it, it falls into it needs to be inspected to get that line. So even if it's in, I guess my other question, sure. question is, so even though it's enclosed, so it's like a sunfish, like a sailboat, right. like, that doesn't need to be inspected. Um by the state's definition, if you're hand launching it and it doesn't have a motor, you're good. Okay. <clears throat> I should say with sailboats it's a little different so that's yeah. no longer like human powered so like big sailboats we inspect those okay the little little sunfish is if you had it so you could walk it down with the, the trailer yourself you can launch it that yeah. way you wouldn't back it up right. right i mean you could but you wouldn't like at a uh someplace around here yep what, why not go farther on this like not, not that you should i'm just sure. saying like why, why why stop here and is this a, a nuisance to rangers because you have to inspect a thousand boats a day? Or? It's more for public education and just to be in line with what the state requires. Because right now it's a little gray on, I have my boat at Macintosh, am I supposed to inspect it because it's inflatable? And, you know, just because it's inflatable doesn't mean it needs to be inspected. So just clearing up this language of what is a paddlecraft, because a lot of our scientists say paddlecraft allowed. Well, what is a paddlecraft? Just trying to get it all on the same page as what the looks like it is in line to the county regs. Everything should be, if you're familiar with the state regs or the county regs, it's the same for long months. So it's not it's not a change up for a time. What about a paddle boat? I mean, that one for using your feet like. Oh, like a pedal boat? Um, that's human power. If you can launch it by hand, you're okay. You're good. Just curious to see what we're going to see out there. I've only seen like a handful of those. They're kind of heavy. Yeah. Super. They're not super popular anymore. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone wants their inflatable stand up battle boards now. Yeah. 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 Any further questions on that one? All good. I think I'm. All right. Second one. Um, so, right now, Longmont Municipal Code prohibits littering and dumping on public lands. Recently, David Bill and other members of this department approached about depositing human remains, like ashes, on city property. Um, we're trying to respectfully amend the littering and dumping rules to not to say basically you can't deposit your human remains on our property um, without calling said human remains trash. That's what we want to avoid. Um, so this will cover depositing human ashes, installing wildlife cameras, or engaging in other activities that are partially addressed by this code. Um, so it'll say, you cannot deposit, leave, store, install, or bury refuse, trash, or litter, or other items of personal property. 
except to deposit trash generated by activities within the park and designated trash receptacles. If it's full, you must remove it from public lands. So anything that's in italics is new language, and anything with the line through it is words that we're taking out. Mm -hmm. Did you consider just making a new item for sure. this? Certainly possible. If we don't I mean, want I just to... wonder if you want to get, because it is a bit of an awkward mix, you know, there's sort of like trash, yes. which is clearly trash, right? and then like there's other, and so I just wondered if it might be... Yeah, I, mean, looked at, um, I don't want to overcomplicate, no, but just having a storage of other items, new article might sure. be easier. And storage of personal property or however we want to phrase it. Yeah. Then it falls and it takes it right out of the trash. The trash conversation. Yeah. That's it. It's a hard part. This is group knows. We got a good group of people that make common sense stuff. When people have the family event, this is going on. We've never interfered with that. We may have a conversation after the fact. If people call beforehand, I do have to say our, our rules and rights prohibit that under this. It's always an awkward conversation. And just so you know, I think respecting people who want to have that last time with the people in a park space, be it the families out there with the kids, and like my kids are really playing in human remains or ashes, or the, or the field staff is having, having a moment when we were in the area. It's, it's really an awkward conversation. So I think this is a, you know, why we want to try to clean it up, and maybe that is the right way. It's easy enough to just say, Hit enter, put a new number beside it, and say this is our depositing of personal possessions. So you know you're gonna raise that, that question. question, right? So I don't want grandma's ashes to be associated with trash. Yeah. Well, and you've got other things there too. I mean, with the you know game cameras and other properties, so I think you could do like a. Um, what what's the policy now on um, geocaches? If you can't use them, do you know? If we went by letter of the law, are you adding? Personal property to public lands. Yeah, yeah. That's what it seems. What if it's yeah. public property? Because anybody can do it. Um, right, because you're not asking to ever get it back. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're you're right. donating your property to the public. Yeah, yeah. 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 back. Yeah. 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 I feel like a cigarette and said that it's a public donation, but I mean, really, I guess it's the addition of of an item to a natural environment or or built environment. Um, we we know they're all over in the parks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be the ranger that goes through and takes everybody's fun away, though. So, um, and there's always the you know ability to get a permit to do something that isn't specifically addressed by code or is in violation of code, and that's something that's addressed by these by this proposed code update as well. Um, that would I think pretty appropriately clearly address geocaching. It, does David have the authority to approve that? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things too that you know with making rules and regs, a lot of times been pretty forced and things have not been a problem yet. When they become a problem, yet kind of making a rule reg applies to once at the county geocache became a new thing back then, and people were like actually taking big boulders off the fronts of dams and hiding stuff under them, and yeah. they're putting they're putting the munition containers chained to trees. So it came up with it has to be a clear container you can see through. You cannot disturbed soil and stuff. So we aren't, we, I don't think we've seen any of those impacts yet. So maybe we let this one kind of go to see if it becomes a problem. But there definitely are things that, you know, we had to have bomb squad. We have a ammunition container change a tree. It's like, what, what do we do with this? And who's going to be the person that opens it up? Right. Um, so I, I think a lot the, the sport in and of itself is evolved where people are making better common sense choices. Um, and I, I don't think it's become a problem at this point yet. Yeah, but I mean, I've also encountered the bomb squad response yep. with someone that they had basically a, a pipe, metal pipe with fittings on the other end and a, a cable coming out. It looked yeah. like oh a few that was in previous parts of the report, but it sounds like it happened here as well. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it seems to be, I feel like it's a little less popular you now that there's so many other kind of like virtual and augmented reality. Right. I'm sure like anything we can imagine will become a problem eventually yeah. on the park system. Is it fair to say there's a distinction between the definition of the code and enforcement of the code, too, right? Like, I have our discretion. I try to be more spirit of the rule than letter right. of the rule, but I think at some point I have to follow letter of the rule. But yeah, I have discretion on this is okay, this is not okay. But like we're saying, we try to apply common sense for where we can. I don't want to be the fun police taking all the all the fun things away. But so I like, are there? <laughs> so that's like what you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Are there times where it is okay though? And I mean, you said sometimes you have to do the letter of the law, but is there just times where it's okay to, to do things? What are things? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm talking, the, the geocache is, sure. is pretty innocent thing. And, okay. and I understand what you gave as examples. But I would think most people, they want it to be small, they want it to be somewhat hard to find, mm -hmm. and and to penalize them for other people making bad choices, I just hate to see us do that. I'm gonna go back to, we have really good ranges, understand they have discretion. Mm -hmm. I think you could enforce the bad behavior on things. If someone's doing things I've seen in the past where people are with shovels, they're moving rocks off dams, so that falls under other parts yeah, that you should not remove, yeah. violate, destroy, yeah. mutilate. You, you could probably write under that. And I, I do think if it's getting close, these guys are really great at having a conversation with people to say, this is going to stay probably off the books as long as we do it in a smart way. Okay. And that helps. Yeah, sorry, I'm speaking for you guys. No, yeah, yeah, he's got a great group. I've, I've seen a lot of people that always going to go with that black and white piece of it. And I think, again, Longmont has a group of people that really understand what we're trying to achieve to support our community, but also protect those resources. So, I think it's a public safety hazard or is a resource damage. That's, if there's no both of those, then, I mean, I get accused of being the fun police. I try not to be, so. And we'll talk about in Amendment 4, that's going to come up here in a second, about um, kind of exceptions to the code that can be made under David's authority as the director and through the permitting process for either commercial, special events, research, uh, you know, kind of things like that, and kind of better clarifying that process. And Bryce will talk about what that. Do you feel like this is included in golf property? Golf isn't public land, so no. It isn't? It not, is. by, not by the definition I go off of. No. Is it, it, it lists it pretty clearly in the, in the code on what the public lands yeah, are. You don't have to, I don't, yeah. I don't want, I just, okay. that's the question. It should be in the parks, greenways, nature areas. Yeah, it's defined in the, in the municipal code, so like the specific areas that are called public lands are codified. I don't believe it includes golf courses. The, the human ashes is an issue in golf. That's why I asked. Mm -hmm. uh, People do like their golf courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He loved the game Cube. I not love him, but. <laughs> It says uh, community parks, neighborhood parks, nature areas, dog parks, off street trails, greenways, breezeways, micro plazas, yeah. and preserves. Yeah. Not golf. Not golf. Not golf. Should we add though? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just, <laughs> just trying to the other yeah, 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 balls in public yeah, public yeah, lands. Yeah, so, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So so quick check down the line here again. Any concerns or recommendations to night number two? Here? <laughs> sorry, I'm a client. No, don't be sorry, don't be sorry. No. So I'm here maybe split trash and what we call it disposal, storage, personal property, storage and other ones. So we're not saying trash when we're referring to these things. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. And just, I'm mean, sorry, one more piece Bryce yeah. talked about, you know, he has quick change. This has been a very big conversation with groups. We have our attorney work with this. Liz has been working with this. So this is not just us making quick changes. So we'll run that through Liz and stuff too. And I think she'd be very supportive. But. All right, let's keep going. Yeah. So number three, people might freak out when they first see it, but I promise it's no big deal. Um, staff would like to remove 13.20.05012, which covers camping from chapter 13. Um, and then we're going to enforce camping under its definition in chapter 10. So basically, this is a recommendation from Liz, our attorney. She likes everything to be the same for just about everybody. So as PD enforces chapter 10 for camping. We're going to start enforcing chapter 10 for camping and remove it from 13. Um, she just thinks it'll be easier to understand. Having it in one place instead of two places makes it a lot less confusing for her and everyone else. Jess got a question. Yeah. So if we ever wanted to do camping again for a special occasion at Union, would that prohibit that from happening? I'm saying okay. nothing should change is that for instead of on the ticket me writing 13, I write 10. Okay. That's our intent. It's almost the same language as that play. Yeah. 
in that. <coughs> That's what I was going to ask. Is there is. like a difference in practice that this creates, or it just removes a duplicate reference? That's it. And it removes a barrier to like if they if the city wanted to revise the definition of camping and it exists in two places, now you have to repeal and reenact a code in two different chapters. So it just kind of removes one. And this is where really camping was in public lands, and because of some of the challenges we've had within the city, it now applies to some of those right of ways and things that aren't in that defi definition of public land. So this gives our um, public safety officers that, that broader scope if someone's camping on the golf course. It can be covered now under 10. Yeah. So that one might look scary at first because people say, oh, you're delaying camping in public lands? It's not what we're doing. We're just enforcing it under a different section of code. That one's pretty straightforward. Any questions, concerns? I was going to suggest to bring to council if you can say, like, remove a unnecessary or duplicative, like, give some, some characterization that it might help with the presentation. Sure. Because it is really duplicating what's already in there. All right, number four. Um, so staff would like to amend 13.20.050 number 13, commercial use to better cover all activities that we are witnessing under public lands, including what Price was referring to others of commercial use, research use. Um, it basically allows them to apply for a permit through data bill and then approve on a case by case basis. Right now, we don't have a really clean, easy way for people to do these activities that are kind of gray in the mini code, but this will be a nice, easy um, permit to do the things that we deem appropriate. What are some examples? Um, you've had some people request what research projects that they've gotten out. Yeah, so yeah, we've had um, a variety of special use requests at Button Rock Preserve, which is our protected watershed, as you know. Um, some of them are things that the city has been interested in, in pursuing you know, as you know, citizen science, for instance. Um, David and I work together to um, allow a citizen science project in partnership with Trout Unlimited that has a stream water quality sensor that are that is uh, maintained by citizen scientists. Everything from that to commercial fly fish guiding um, to um, foot races to guided climbing and everywhere in between. Um, there's currently not a clear answer to that or for the public when they're looking at our municipal code portal, it doesn't tell them how to get a permit. We have the use of public places permit system, but that was not tied in a, sens a sensible way to our code language. So what this would do is take advantage of that permit system that already exists and the review process that already exists um, so that David doesn't have to create a one-off letter authorizing you know, said special you know, use on public lands. It creates a more objective kind of um, criteria for that, which seems to be a fair, more fair and just more streamlined and efficient for staff and for members of the public that are looking to do something. So definitely have a question about this. Um, but if I could just go really quick, I think that Again, like the citizen science piece, again, I had to take that sort of in the spirit of the, the law and what I think law and law residents want to see, people doing this kind of work is what we want to see. It just wasn't really clear. That helps clarify that. And our use of public places has some pretty unique triggers. So it has to be, um, it, there has to be amplified noise. There has to be al alcohol is another trigger. Um, there's 25 people. This, well, there's no number limit on it before. Uh, there's no, there was, a, there was not a number piece. You have, if you're setting up a table or a vending area, and there's like a, only one of amplified music, did I say that one? So, I mean, sign. Uh, on your sign bigger than a card table. So these are weird triggers that fly, the guided fly fishermen would not trigger any of those. A group of 25 people up there climb would not trigger any of those. So I think that's one thing you want to do, but I think Jeff has a good point on there is another system too with the recreation. Because right. some of the things we're talking about, David has delegated to to recreation. Yeah. Is, do we have to go back to him every time then? I want to make everything easier for you. So okay. What what's so as long as so the the fishermen that you talked about, five fishermen, recreation does all of those agreements with those folks. At Union Reservoir mm -hmm. and it, with some folks over at Macintosh as well. Mm -hmm. That since we're already doing other 
applications, it, it made sense that we did that as well. So the thing triggers it when they show it, a traffic control plan triggers it as well. Yeah. So like a foot race that has to close intersections and stuff would tri trigger the, the yeah. UOPP. So what about, uh, uh, you guys also see like Overseas Rogers Grove. Mm -hmm. So uh, every year, I know some groups like the Longman area and Dims have a have kind of a picnic there, and they have amplified music. That, should, that goes through um, city manager's office, and they get your PPP. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're not just you know no. signing up to use the park. It's a much if better. if they're being honest. If they're <laughs> so, and I don't, I'm not picking on them, no. but a lot of people do a reservation for a park shelter and they say it's just going to be my family yeah. and then the family brings a hundred of their friends Close which <laughs> triggers something <laughs> different so, okay. so. I have a related question um, if we want to talk about this later after this you guys probably know but it's about the how the city coordinates all this science and research that's permitted on public lands and so like do you guys have a record of all of the individuals or institutions that have implemented research projects and do you know where they are and are you like monitoring them so make sure I, they're appropriate do you get the results if people are doing studies all these, these two start in case there's things i don't know about but i would say with the two of you uh, i mean i think there's two things that come to mind initial like first response is we probably don't know everything that's going on because it has not been clearly required by code that you have any kind of authorization to, to do a more involved, intensive research project that might disturb public lands. When I looked at Boulder County, City of Boulder, Fort Collins, other nearby um, you know, ordinances and codes, I think that that regulation that they've adopted is so that they can start to better understand who's out there, what are they doing, and then also benefit from the, you know, the findings of these projects since they are in the public domain. So this would help us better understand what's out there and, and benefit from it as, as a natural resource manager. Um, however, I think we do have quite a bit of knowledge of, of the um, projects that are being pursued by people that are being honest and are, are engaged and, and are looking to get permission before doing um, a project. Uh, we have a small grants, yeah. research grant so program. We actually Put dollars out there to bring people in to, to do that. So Jim Crick and that group and Danielle are the ones that are really going to do sort of their job of cataloging that. I bet there's probably I bet Dan probably has a file someplace on paper where that was, but really do a better job of seeing where these things line up and we can really do a better recall on this. But if they're coming in, being upfront with us, we are really saying yes, you can do this, but we actually get access to your data and your information too. That's the kind of trigger that I've always used. This this has to be this is for a private entity, it has to have a public good, and that public good is us receiving that information. Yeah. I that... mean, if you don't already, I think it would be great if you right. had a database that, you know, where you know, say, like, Danielle. what are all the projects that are happening, somebody could look it up, I mean, because it is public, you know, to make right. sure it could be public. I don't know if we're that accessible. And... You hear me oftentimes now with the splitting of, of Jim and Danielle's positions, where Dan was doing a lot of great work trying to get people to do research at baseline. But that depth wasn't quite there, and that's where our, my expectation from Danielle and Jim is that depth will now be there. It also provides a mechanism to protect programs that have been going on for multiple decades, like the Plains to Park program that, um, from Westview Middle School that has been doing research up at Button Rock as well as in Rocky Mountain National Park. This allows us to very clearly issue them a permit to formalize what they've been doing with letter authorization, I believe, um, from a former director. Um, so just making sure that we're both um, vetting things that happen in the future and protecting these long-standing research citizen science partnerships that we've had uh, in a way that benefits the people of Longmont and the, the resources that we're trying to manage. My only comment was, I think it was good. I, I think I'd like to see the definition of an event and mm -hmm. impact people in definitions, not in a code segment. So the, the, def the definition of a special event is not limited to that number right now in your old selected fund. Is it the first time using this term? Yeah. I think putting that in uh, 1337, the definitions in 13, rather than here, makes more sense, I think. Sure. Or something like that. Like 25. Why? Why the biggest thing for me on this, 
is the, is the impact. It's not really this group as much as is, is our maintenance and tumors group. If you don't have people doing some sort of notification, if they don't even need a reservation on doing it, you get an event that has 25 people, and all of a sudden we show up on Monday and the trash is overflowing and we get complaints. So for me, it really is just an operational piece to help us do a better job of managing our parks. I believe it was also the, uh, or the trigger for a uh, reservation for the shelter. Is that for the picnic shelter? If you want guaranteed access, you yeah. need to reserve. I think that, that also came from that. And then it was um, similar to or more um, uh, liberal, I guess, than the restrictions from surrounding agencies. They might have a lower threshold, um, like City Boulder, Boulder County, Fort Collins. But I believe it it mirrors that requirement for the, sh the picnic shelter reservation system. So again, not trying to put a barrier for people, but trying to ensure our parks stay clean for that next group of people, make sure that we're managing the, the uses of getting out there. And there's no fee for this, so it's not like they're reserving a shelter, but they're coming out and they know they're going to go to Macintosh and put up a tent that we can try to think about how we manage that. Is there a fee for small commercial activities, like if you're hosting a Yoga class at Thompson Park. That should be, should be going through our okay. should be. Should be. It, Again, like the idea of where, where we'll, we'll go to find that out if they have good information, we'll have to that. Yeah. Final comment, just moving that to the front. Sure, it's cleaning up that way. Yeah. Anything else for you? All right. <clears throat> Great, thanks, Sam. Let's keep moving. Moving at five, we propose to amend. 13.20.05018 to allow for model rockets to be launched in a designated area after receiving a permit for recreation. Um, this area would be the baseball fields at Sandstone Ranch. Uh, Longmont Fire has already approved this activity. This is slightly amending our projectiles um, rule to allow for this very specific activity to happen in this very specific area with a permit for recreation and approval of Longmont Fire. This is one where we're trying not to be the total no fun people because when I first got here, it was one of the ones that people are calling asking for that permit. And having daughters that are engineers and totally supporting kids in science and STEM, and there was no way I could really amend it. There was no pieces that the director could give this permit. And it was something I thought was significant enough that I've been saying no, and I just like, that's a <laughs> bad guy in this. But um, I talked to Jeff, and Jeff feels like there are places that. We could do it safely and he'd be the one that does it and fire feels the same way so it's just a a piece where i didn't feel comfortable just even giving that um, without working with fire and recreation so jeff's been willing to take this on can you not do that in other parks that aren't listed yes a project yeah there's there are no yeah no, no rockets no they do it is done yeah. but it's not approved <laughs> Right, without oh, location agree. stones, arrows, javelins. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the safety side, I'm just curious to you about the so we're saying where, but is it also so a when? Are there locations mm -hmm. well, it's where that would be a part of the permit. Yeah. 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 Certainly wouldn't want to do it during the day. Yeah. 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 Mike, Colin, 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 Colin. My comments would be I'd just split this to its own number. Uh, this is like I don't think Mud Ball Rockets is playing a game involving throwing objects. It's, if there's no reason not to, you can make it the 19. And then is designated areas sufficient or should that be defined somewhere? Like should the public know from the code that it's sandstone, you want to retain the right to allow it somewhere else in the future? Yeah, Jeff, I guess it, it, If you keep it sandstone, I should put it in the code. Do you have people that are looking for doing archery competitions or stuff like that at some of these places? Is that like? Well, it, well that, we for sure don't do that because that is a projectile that so we're yeah. shutting that any possibility of something like that down. Yeah. So. But that's in the code already. That's already and, and I'll tell you, Sean, the reason I know that is because Recreation was doing the uh, archery program on it, Samsung. <laughs> 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 and Dan at the time said, hey, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that. It's, like, we all learned those yeah. lessons. Yeah. I actually had game ones at the county and had kids like shooting paintballs in a open space and I could you go, go in your backyard or someplace. You can't even do it in your backyard. There's no projectiles in the city limits even. Right. So it's you know it's it's a, a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. So I hear the same thing. Maybe split that up as since it's so unique making it as line line item. I prefer that 
because that's where it got a little confusing because I was I was thinking you were saying you you could, but you know, yeah. uh, and it would just be thrown in with the, the rockets. No, so separating the cell might help that then too. Yeah. You can do the rocket with a permit. You can't do the others. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, very. That's a good catch. Okay. Amendment six. Um, we propose to amend our current fish and wildlife section of chapter thirteen um, to list the specific roles that are posted at our individual parks. Um, our hopes are this will help the public understand that different parks have different rules regarding fishing. Um, for example, for Union Reservoir, we're proposing introducing a size limit on walleye to help protect the fishery. Um, we would also want to list out the special rules over here at Eisenwald and the special rules that are at Golden Ponds. Is they're posted at those parks, but they're not at one centralized online location. So, unless you go to Golden Ponds and read the sign, you have no idea what the rules are. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's just tough when people are trying to do the right thing and they get all ready to go and they get out there and it's posted. You can't find that information online. So I think you know, it does require us to keep up on top of rules and websites. Mm -hmm. Whenever you do this, it adds more work here, but I think it's helpful to the public that they don't have to. Show up and say, "Oh, I can't do it here." Then drive the next bus. Say, "I can't do it here." And then hope they they hit one where they can do it. Um, we'd also like to adopt all Colorado Department of Wildlife Fishing regulations for consistency across agencies and ease and enforcement. Um, we'd also like to further restrict the use of traps and nets to help preserve fish populations. So what it would look like is Fish and Wildlife Number Nineteen, and then each individual area that has specific special fishing rules. Um, and then we adopt all Colorado Parks and Wildlife rules and regulations regarding fishing, which are adopted in our entirety as amended by CPW. My question is, are there any potential conflicts between the Colorado State rules and our rules? And if, if so, which, how does it preempt the other? So if these are approved, I submit all of these special rules that we have to CPW, and then they'll start listing it in their brochure. Um, so they will defer to our judgment on what rules we want to apply to our lakes. As a CBW lake, obviously they have the final say, but one like ours, we decide, hey, at Union, we don't want you to use bait anymore. They will say, oh, if that's the rule you want to amend, fine, and we'll put it in our brochure. So they'll honor whatever we would like to do. Um, they'll kind of default to the landowners on, on this. It's kind of a constitutional supremacy thing, though, too. We, right. we cannot say you can take more walleye than the states of Austin. We can so be more restrictive. Yeah. And yeah. they will respect that. Yeah. We can't open things up and say you can fish for. This you know, is the bass. baseline. CBW right. is the baseline. And yep. it's more specific beyond that. It's, okay. Did you get the CBW fishing guide? There's pages and pages of special regs for each individual week. I don't, they publish them in Spanish and in, and in English each year, and they provide us with this. You know, as high of a yeah. stack of brochures <laughs> as, as we think we can distribute to people. And they're pretty good about um, making sure that they're accurate. Any other questions from the group? Another big thing that this does is it makes it where I can enforce CPW law under Longmont Municipal Code. Like if you don't have a fishing license or if you're fishing multiple rods, it makes it a nice, clean, easy way for me to enforce that. I have two questions. Um, Things like bag limits and things like that, is there a time bound part of that too, or is that per day? Or how per day. Okay. And that's just a There's bag and in possession. Sure. Possession is, I have to like go to your house and look in your freezer to yeah. enforce possession, so that's kind of outside of my yeah. realm. But you feel like it's sufficient? Yeah. Bag. Okay. And the other one was um, the amendment to 20, I think makes sense. I would just maybe say that um, this seems to contradict what we just said, which is that the city can supersede the state law. This says we've adopted all the state laws here. Mm -hmm. I think you should add except where it's superseded by city law. Right. 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 Which makes sense. It's great. Right? Yeah. In these areas or something. Right? Yeah, whatever that might be. Just to clarify that these are, these are more restrictive than the state law. These apply, not the right. state law that we're adopting. Mm -hmm. Nice. Is is there anything in here that says um, I mean about where this will be posted specifically? Like we talk, we talk about putting on the website, but there's no amendment necessarily that calls that out, right? Like, I wouldn't think so, no. Now, my plan is we're going to have to go heavy education for a very long time right? with this, just so people know what's going on. Like, I'm not going to write a ticket March 1st, first day someone fishes. 
I don't know what that means, but um, my plan was to, we've got to get updated signage at Union, especially, um, printing little handout cards that I can give to all the fishermen, like, hey, here's the new bag limits. We have a grace period until June 1st to learn this or whatever date we decide and go with education for a while and see if that works. Do you, do you think the fisher people at Union are going to be upset with these changes? No, I should have added it somewhere in this, but we did a bunch of surveys this year mm -hmm. and everyone was super supportive. Okay. Especially the walleye fishermen. Yeah, I think as far as where to put it, I think these are important things we put them on our website pulling up because, you know, our, our judge is very good about the fact that he expects people to go to the municipal code and read it. We don't have to, if you're using public lands, it's your responsibility to know all the rules and regs. Mm -hmm. My piece is let's try to make it as easy for people to do the right thing as possible. So we'll try to put it as many places as possible. Yeah. Fishing beer, entryway, yeah. everywhere that people are fishing. This is not supposed to be like, I got you. I want people to know what the right thing is and, <clears throat> and then do that. So I just want to be clear that that's the, the where the rules are being uh, presented is separate from the actual amendments that are taking place here. So it's a separate. Yeah, there's. I don't think there's any municipal code guideline of like how many places I have to post it or where. where. It's going to be, I guess, our best judgment on where the most people are going to see it, where it makes the most sense. If anyone actually checks them, yeah, right. Right. the actual amendments, right? I'll the, give the, the fishermen the, some credit. They most of them want to do the right thing. Yeah. They want to be educated on what's the bad thing that you're going to use bait here. For the most part, they're a good group of folks. And that CPW guide will, once we do this, they will yep. start putting that into all those special, every lake will have a, has a section in it. Yeah. Got it. Any other questions from students? Okay. We can keep moving. <clears throat> so amendment seven, we're gonna create an exception in chapter 13 to allow certain e-bikes that can safely utilize the trails and greenways. This is similar to the language that I've used before that allows e-bikes on our trails. Whether we like or not, e-bikes are there anyway. So mm -hmm. I guess if you go technically, we don't allow motorized vehicles on trails right now. Is an e-bike a motorized vehicle? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So <laughs> yes. would you rather we chase down every e-biker or create an amendment that says if you fall into these parameters and are operating in a safe manner, you're okay. So what is a safe manner? How is that? Uh -huh. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Is there a speed limit? Is there a like clarification on they have to move aside for pedestrians? Is there? Yep. Mm. So right now the speed limit is not in the municipal code. And I told David a speed limit is only as good as the radar I have shooting it. Um, it's I've, still an indicator of expectations. I think the typical accepted speed is 15. Um, but I've, I've definitely seen people go faster than 15. I will just tell this group that this is something that we have kind of avoided for a while. We've watched a lot, of, a lot of other organizations go through this process and how to manage it. And I think we just kind of learn from them a little bit too, but there, there's a lot to this. And this is what I'm to be, I don't want to take from you, but this is what this group wants to spend more time on. I know the transportation group has talked about this as well, signage, but getting something in there so that one, we're not just tacitly saying that piece Jeff said, it's against rule of the rights, but you go by this ranger and they're not gonna stop the effort you like. So we start here and say, we're gonna allow these things and then we start developing more robust piece on, do we need to get radar for rangers? Do we need more rangers to do do that? I, I look at ski resorts and again, you come down the bottom and says slow and you're responsible for what happens and you know, it's it, there really is a, unfortunately a lot of, when something happens and you are not operating safely, then you become responsible. They have a so. healthy body of case law in their favor that they're not liable for anything. So well, <laughs> exactly. well, that's, is, yeah. again, as a municipality, that's not what we want to fall back on, right. too. We want to do the right thing. But uh, again, we do have that. So it's going to come to the individuals and try to, again, want to make sure it's as safe as possible. So I'm, I'm happy to say this is one we could pull and make this a bigger conversation or I start it here. That. I mean, I just. And maybe you can convince me that putting something in there. I just worry that it won't get revisited. Okay. And if it is included. And yeah, I, I agree. Because we're revisiting it. Um, code 42 and 13.20.050, just one, it's the general public lands section, um, does discuss um, wheel, you know, wheel conveyances. They talked about bicycles, skiers, skateboards, roller skates, roller blades, and other non motorized vehicles. Um, and requires them to yield to equestrians and pedestrians 
and ride in a, in, in a safe manner. So you have some teeth and, and, ability, I guess, and an ability to ticket for it's that. It's specifically but, permitting a motorized vehicle without a lot of clarity around how that might be different. And, and under well. Colorado Revised Statute, I do believe that e-bikes are not considered motorized vehicles if they're under a certain weight class and like right. lot balance. Yeah. Yeah. It was revised, I think, in the last maybe five years. Mm -hmm. Did you guys look mm -hmm. specifically at the classes? I, I was involved in this for the county in rulemaking, and there was a lot of discussion on class one, class two, class three. They said to not do class three because of this up top speed of that. Like, it, it does require a pedal assist, but it's 20 mile per hour top speed. And that, I think, we decided was just too fast for you know, pressure fines past in the county. And 20 would be really fast in the greenway. Yeah. Um, Unsafe, unsafe fast, I think. So I'd be in there like tabling it for the discussion uh, of you know comparable. It's a big piece of that. That's a for this group here. I think going in front of council is something that you know may have the same questions and make sure that we've vetted it well and stuff is probably yeah. a good place to be. Do, does Bicycle Longline have any information on this? Um, generally, we hate the class structure because speed has nothing to do with like bike. Do you guys generally hate class yeah, structures? Yeah, 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 you go without it. Yeah, because we like. I mean, I mean. So um, even though there's this this index wearing like, roadies that are in the group like myself, um, generally they're just like well, a lot of people hate them because they're trying to cut through on greenways from one place to another, and so we treat them the same way as like a class three bike. So. It's your behavior right. and your and your overall speed, not the conveyance of that. Because when people buy the bikes, a lot of times they don't know the whole class structure and how fast the, the top ones can go, and they're just buying it because it was used on eBay and it fits their their sort of thing. So um, that's why it's you know, it's a little bit difficult. I think, yeah, and, and you know, um, but so Colorado has gotten a little bit more away from the classes of bikes sort of system too because there's a lot of modifications, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that go on on um, bikes going down hills and things like that too. So it drives people crazy. <clears throat> Is the guy who rides the motorized unicycle around? I thought they don't want him on the greenway. Oh yeah, yeah well, I mean they're just yeah. rolling. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there's a lot of one wheels. I mean yeah. there's people yeah. who use one wheels all over the place. It's not like so, I could end the highway. He's he has a motorcycle helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, yeah. survival instincts must be very good. I think it should be very flat. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean he's oh, he's it's scary. up with traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I tell what's on. I think again, I think this is the right group to start having that conversation. But uh, I think this, so this group knows that we are aware of it. It's a thing we've been fortunate. I do think that you know. My opinions change over the years too. You start looking at equity and people that, you know, we have a pretty significant greenway system that is, you know, transportation oriented. A lot of people are using it to, you know, efficiently get to and from work or events and stuff. So I, I think that um, it's part of the time that we, we can look at this. So. Yeah. And, and anecdotally, like uh, the farmer's market bike valet, which a lot of people are coming off the greenway to get to, it used to be 1% electric bikes. And it's like 50% electric bikes now. Kids through elderly people. It's mm -hmm. all over the place. Just so it's there's no difference. Right. It's calling it electric bike or bikes. You just have to be like those those objects. Really, it's really what it is. Well, it just bike drives us crazy. Expectations like starting if they are really becoming so mainstream, making sure that expectations of sort of safety and behavior right. are also <clears throat> mainstream. One more technical question on the language of the amendment here. It says designated roadway, roadways within public use, but it's not specifying any of that here. Would that be part of the definitions, or how do you see that playing out? Is that be something that would be posted elsewhere outside of the ordinance? Sorry, repeat your question. So it says here designated roadways. Yeah. But, you know. So it's unlawful to operate a wheeled or track motor vehicle except on designated roadways open to public use. Yep, so what are pack, what, how what is the designated roadways? roadway? Yeah, which, which one, which roadway is that designated? Is that specified here? Well, no, it's specified in other parts of the code, though. Right. What, where? Yeah, I don't know. 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 Ye
Isn't that a reference to like the rest of the roadway system? Like yeah. as recognized like, by state law. Like, 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 like cars are not allowed on the greenways, but they're allowed on designated roadways. Oh, I so see. 14? So again, remember these all read is unlawful too. As you, that's what <laughs> our codes are. Uh, I was reading this as thinking more was this was restricting these types of vehicles to specific trails and greenways, but that's not the saying at all. It's the same. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's the opposite. Yeah. yeah if you, so right now, what this is saying, you can. You cannot operate your open motor, or wheeled or tracked motor vehicles, except for designated parking areas or designated city programs. Yeah. yeah, I think designated roadways would be like the bike lane, regular roads, that sort of thing. But my intent is to allow e-bikes onto our trail system. Just right Every trail, allow. without exception. Yeah. I think every paved multi-purpose trail. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think that's where we have to... Right. Look at I think as you talk about the pressure fine, I think you know as, as you look at the equity piece and a lot of our greenways are really a tra kind of transportation corridor because kids can just schools or farmers markets. Um, but we are going to have some more pressure fine things put in kind of where those natural areas and you may want to think about that too. So it's I have five year long greenway detours. Right. <laughs> pressure fines. <laughs> maybe there's a right, maybe there's a road where we want to sure. limit the use on specific roadways that are not considered designated roadways. So can, right. is it an option for you to just pull this part and revisit it that move yeah, forward with the others? Yeah. 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 So. I don't want to hold up all your stuff. Yeah, and then it, it yeah. also like it sounds like the transportation board and the you right. know have this conflicts with provisions zero program is something that they want to begin to. It's a big topic. Yep. All right. Okay, so this is similar to what we talked about with the fishing regulations, but we would like to add to our water based recreation section to adopt all CPW voting rights. To ensure safe operation of vessels on city of Longmont waters, these regulations include but are not limited to use of life jackets, reckless operation, and registration requirements. So right now, if I wanted to write someone for no life jacket, I have to get kind of weird and write you for a violation of posted sign. I don't like doing that if I can avoid it, because that's just kind of, you should have read the sign, you didn't do it. I like to be much more clear and concise of what I'm writing you for. Um, so this would allow us to adopt all of Colorado Parks and Wildlife's voting regs, which include, like I said, life jackets, life jackets for kids, registration of your vessel, um, safe operation, overloaded watercraft, as all, all the CBW has already written. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to me. Maybe we're so we're like inserting this text that is the Colorado Voting Regulations, right? These three lines we're adding? These are three that I deemed important enough to list in our municipal code. And there are Even if you've never that. seen CPW law before, yeah. at least you can see these three. Okay. Um, I think it's good to have them. You could just refer to it, right? But it's good to have them drag through that. Um, it's trying to say basically for adults, they have to have a, a PFD on the, the, on the vessel. Yep. For kids under 13, they have to be wearing it. Yep. And the adults have to have them. And then the third one is where I was a little bit interested. It says all boats and vessels. So is that saying that any anything you're on you're on on the water, for example, the door with a motor. So we're, is it required that you register paddle boards, canoes, kayaks, those things? You have to register motorized ones. Okay. So if you put a motor on your paddle board, which some people do, yes. So this this is intended to refer to motorized to boats and vessels. As just adding that yeah. some more possible. And part of that is because they motorized vessels are participating in the ANS program, and your registration is how you pay into the yeah. ANS program. So I think makes sense. I just I wouldn't know if I had a kayak or not. I had to register with the state. So I can just amend that and say all motorized. Yeah. 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 If you're trying to copy their words, I wouldn't amend their words. <laughs> but whatever. If it fits, it fits. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who register there. Can yeah. It's there. Yeah. They advise you to do that. Yeah. Just in case I find it, I can really. We have that at Macintosh this year. Unless something still live. <laughs> Where does it say that we're a PFD on a uh, paddleboard? You don't have to wear a PFD, you just have a flotation place. Yep, yeah, so by the state's definition of vessel, a paddleboard is a vessel. So. Mm -hmm. 
if you're it says over 15, you have to have one. This says you have to have a wearable EFD. Is that what you just said? Uh, they said, but I thought A was, it has to have, yeah. Um, Each person in the vessel has to have a wearable. Yeah, wearable. Sorry, I missed the wearable. You're thinking like a lifeguard? Oh, like I was thinking throwable. Yeah, throwable. So those are required for the class. Your class two vessels for the bigger ones have to have a throwable. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. 20 feet. In addition to the person. Yeah. This will make my life a lot easier, especially at Macintosh. So stand in front of Macintosh and sell PFDs all day long. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can make a kid a permit first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get, get a permit first for, for the uh, right. commercial use. Yeah, the commercial use on the street. Or put it on the street. Yeah, exactly. What if this street has a city like, uh, long that sells like There you go. Branded. So we actually so yeah. sell them at. You go buy them. Yeah, the vendor up at Macintosh during COVID when it got so busy, Jeff did have a vendor up there. There's new stand up paddle boards. And he was really good. If people were, did not have one, he's actually get, giving you a driver's license. He'll just so be kicked, kicked off the water. So it was a nice relationship where he was actually trying to help people out up there. So I'm going to try to set up like an honor system kiosk where, like, hey, you drove from wherever and you forgot your life jacket in the garage, just grab this one, take it out there, put it back, and you're done. I've been told that'll work great. I've been told you run out of life jackets in three days. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any ideas on Jeff? Yeah. I don't know. I, no, I don't. I, but I have a different question. Does <laughs> any of these changes we've talked about tonight impact people using Dickens Park floating down the river? Mm -hmm. Does it? Mm -hmm. Those aren't classified as vessels by CPW's definition, so they don't fall under. I can advise you have a life jacket. I can advise you wear a helmet, but I can't enforce a law that says that. Okay. Could we uh, uh, put out there at uh, Macintosh a uh, temporary, being uh, serious about this, uh, some sort of uh, temporary sort of kiosk sort of thing that uh, actually maybe was a man, but uh, uh, did uh, you know allow for people. We want people to use it. We just don't want them to use it wrong. Uh, and incorrectly, we would like them to make sure that they have a uh, uh, have a life jacket, especially if you're bringing kids to do this. You said, "Oh darn, I forgot the kids need the life jacket." I was okay just having it, you know, this thing here, and uh, you know it's not going to work. So, what would um, something like that look like? Could it be more like our e-bike uh, uh, rental type of thing? Could fall in that category. That sounds like Bryce has been kind of thinking that a little bit, but maybe between Jeff and, mm -hmm. and Bryce, and just you know, like that, the, the more positive we make it, the more likely people will try to follow. Right. I would like to think the honor system would work. I couldn't. There's no. Yeah. Uh, there's no honor <laughs> among thieves. It's not so. Lucky enough. The thieves have really like ugly like yeah, yeah, so they, 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 they aren't. Yeah. yeah. They're I can spray paint. <laughs> City of Walmart on the oh yeah, there. but I've known people that have uh, taken city sides off there to the same yeah, so they're like going, oh, that looks great. That was a challenge of staff. Like, I was thinking a union where you have staff during most right. of the open hours. I honestly think the city should sell them, like get some get some money in that. Because people would buy city of Walmart out. life jackets, you know, you can get them brand new, whatever. But back to no staff, so it'd be hard, like, harder to do that. It's going to be almost like the, the bike rental, yeah. Yeah. Or the scooter it, rental. And I don't mean to report on Jeff, but there may, that time of year when it gets busy, maybe it's the shoulder season where you can't do it. But if, once it gets busy, there's, I, I bet Jeff can think of something out there to get a a surface out there that's probably generates a revenue and then have the life jacket piece associated with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think having people out there at the beginning of the season just as an educational thing yep. will be good too. They got a lot better this year. I would say we were probably at 30 to 40 percent compliance in early summer. By the end of the year, we're closer to 80 90 percent. So okay. They got a lot better with our on the water patrols. But yeah, I got cussed out a few times that happens. I, I actually will be in the phone police on that one. Like, if you were out there with the kids, I'll watch it. I'm going to do escort you to shore. Yeah, that's. How do you yeah, get around? What's that? How do you get around? Uh, oh, where you are. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's probably what you need to do. Just need to know who we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I always key up on dispatch when I am on the water Macintosh. If someone calls the cops, it's just me. <laughs> yeah. Don't send anyone out. 
No, it's really, it's really good to see. I, at Union a couple times this year, I was there when it was really windy, and there was some really unsafe stuff happening. We didn't blow across the lake, and you guys were out there rescuing people and telling them back. But that was probably me getting yeah. my rear end kicked that day. Yeah. yeah, it was a couple of weekend days that I just got thrown all over the place. Yep. I will put a plug into this group that's kind of pushed this and council for doing that because um, we're in the process right now of hiring that third senior ranger. So before, um, you know, probably just so far, but Button Rock, it was hard for him to come out. But, you know, our, our 42 parks and 100 miles of trail, the union rangers, when they weren't busy at union, are out doing all those other things. We now have, Bryce will be the, the parks and Greenway senior ranger, and he'll have two, two ranges out there. So we'll have a, a lot more to folks that could so think about when he's pulling people off of Macintosh, there are people being blown all over Union too, and it was really tough to staff that. So, so Union's terrible because it's just because it's like there's nothing there to hold. Exactly. It just becomes a, like a bowl. So we, we definitely will have some better coverage, but again, I'm going to put the other plug in there too. If you think about places open seven days a week, sunrise to sunset, three people is still not a lot. I think we did 162 rescues in 2022. It was down this year because the weather like completely knocked out June, so half of our summer was gone. But I think we're still in the 60s for, for rescues. All right, any other considerations for this amendment? Let's keep on track. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Good. So we're going to introduce um, a hazardous activity section as a catch-all for certain actions that are not covered by other ordinances. Um, these actions would include landing aircraft, boat operations, and jumping from bridges. So this leaves a lot of discretion to the ranger on how do we define what's a hazardous activity. Um, but a hazard to the safety of the participant or other persons exempted areas where such activities are specifically authorized. What what are those those things with the parachute and the motor and they're fun? Yeah. There are times where they're they have been landing on the soccer fields. Why soccer is going yeah, on? Yeah, almost landed on the sandstone this year. Yeah. That's kind of what inspired this. Yeah. Okay. Right. I just yeah. wonder, so this will say, I mean, I guess I could look at that. What will it say exactly that these are? We'll do that in teletext, right? Yep. So it would be unlawful to engage in any activity which constitutes a hazard to the safety of the participant or other persons exempt in areas where such activities are specifically authorized. And is that in a section that makes it clear sort of what? I mean, I'm just thinking that could be. No, I think he's saying it's open for interpretation. So he can right, say that. Right. Now I can list like such as this, this, and this, such as, but not limited to this, this, and this. But currently, I don't have that. I mean, it's probably fine, but I just wonder, you know, hazard is subjective. It, it, it is, and I, I, I'm just going to go it's back to. It's pretty open, so. But. You know, the jumping off the bridges was a big thing yeah. that you know we we had to try to figure out how to do that and it was really tough because it wasn't anything that would truly address it at that time um i've seen people using the bridges to repel off of which may not be unsafe to because they have equipment but the people underneath have done it i think for this it gives the rangers out to have that conversation and you got to remember that if they do run the ticket you could have to court and these guys have to feel, feel pretty comfortable that they can articulate why they wrote something that was a hazard activity in front of a, a judge any of this include drones? Hmm. We have That's different drones. Yeah. <laughs> There's an existing code. Yeah. I'm referencing drones. It might be helpful to put just some examples, you know, yeah. including but not limited to, just so, you know, it's not like somebody out doing taekwondo or karate in the park or so. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's these the extreme the things. I've seen was pretty much just like that. I probably wouldn't have talked to him about that and kind of stepped on it, but <laughs> I would have just let him do his thing because he was 100 yards from anyone else and yeah. not bothering anyone and not creating a hazard. But yeah, that's she idea. elected to contact him and he let her know about <laughs> <laughs> There's some guys sword fighting at Akintasha today. Yeah. yeah. What? Not like sharp swords, but practicing some kind of sword fighting art. Oh, that's a reenactors. Yeah. Full armor, full contact enable. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, and that's yeah. like, this is to my point of why yeah. I think just giving some examples of things that are clearly like, we mean these things that are clearly right. a hazard, right. not like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> Does is there anything related to the potential remedy or penalty for this? 
That's my very last name. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll hold that then. Number ten. Yep. Um, so we're going to introduce a Union Reservoir section to address some specific issues that we are witnessing at the lake. Um, these are maybe rules that are unwritten, so unenforceable. So I'd like to get them written so we can enforce them. Um, that includes requiring that annual passes be permanently affixed to windshields. So this prevents sharing the passes and people swapping between guards and giving it to their neighbor. Um, that's not fair to people who do what they're supposed to. So we're going to require that your annual pass be permanently affixed to your windshield. That's been the practice, but it's just not written anywhere. Um, also allows for metal detecting in certain areas of Union Reservoir, provided that your holes are responsibly filled in. Um, and then it also adopts the long-standing ban on personal watercraft that's not written anywhere, but needs to be in the code. I can tell you you can't use your jet skis, but there's nothing that I can point at that says, see here, it says you can't. Hmm. Just like, we just say no. Because I mean, I don't it's like saying weightless, it. right? <laughs> but they yeah. don't think that a jet ski creates a weight? It does, which is why they've always been banned. I'm okay. just putting it into words. Uh, these are not allowed. Is that right? But if you want a water ski, you just have to paddle fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Or you could, are the other like um, boards allowed? Currently, yes. Yeah, and I've had yeah. dozens of conversations with them, and they understand what I'm saying. Right now, they operate in a responsible manner. They do everything they're supposed to. They don't create a weight by the nature of their watercraft. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, yeah. As long as you guys are doing what you're supposed to, and I don't do any complaints, and my boss doesn't tell me to, to do something about it, by all of our rules, you're fine. But as soon as you start abusing it, or doing things that are unsafe, or I get a ton of complaints, we're going to have to revisit it. Yeah. Since I had that conversation with him two years ago, no issues. Yeah. No, the guy who I see all the time, you guys is always good about it. There's about Just four people that are doing it right now, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a leap forward with a motor underneath it. It's like a high point. Yeah, it's like a high point. High point. Yeah, high point. Yeah. They're right they're here. Really you really see the person like. But they just. They have a little thing in their hand. Like a yeah. 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 They're very <laughs> expensive, which keeps a lot of people from, from doing them. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's that's, my, that's my fear. As soon as you. Yeah, not the big one. Yeah. As soon as you start seeing these start showing up at Walmart, where it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we might have to be before you again saying what we wanted to do about these yeah. things. Yeah. But for right now, they're, they're not causing any issues. <clears throat> My only question was the, um, the added text you have below doesn't talk about uh, one of the things that's in the notes. But I don't think they Okay. Yeah. So if you add language, language, I would add the language. Yep. So I, I do have a question about that. Sorry. Okay. So. You cannot remove or take anything from the public land. So if you find a gold doubloon <laughs> out at Union Reservoir, yeah. you, you're really not allowed to take that. That's the property of the city. So uh, I'm not sure no, encouraging people sure to. I can easily strike it. Just the question: Does it, it come up in front of the Occasionally, yeah. That's the basis that I've used to prohibit it at Button Rock when you're you're excavating. Um, a natural setting and then whatever you find is either a natural you know artifact that can't be removed or it's something that I need to book into property and evidence at the police station because it's of value to someone who lost it but it is a common request like there's a lot of people that really really love but that again well, I think it's <laughs> excluded anywhere else in the parks I mean, so you, this is the first time that will be in the go to the yeah I think it's just been so excluded. excluded. Yeah, I think it's been excluded just because you can't really dig up or take or anything. So we just, 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 just allow it at the new dry creek. <laughs> <laughs> I just think of somebody who, let's say somebody, uh, uh, you know, lost a wedding ring. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sunset pool. pool. Huh? Sunset pool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, all the time, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Things like that in the sand and whatnot. Uh, uh, then you have to. That's that, that would be you a call to, to me, hopefully, and say, "Can I get a permit to do this, or can I go out and do this?" And you, you yeah, say yes. Course, yeah. It happened okay. at Macintosh Lake this year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think I wanted to like snorkel and I left text. 
find a ring. Oh, to find a ring. Not just, like I said. No, it's just like a <laughs> Are you successful? I, I, I bet not. I mean, I'm thinking that being on the shore, maybe in the sand in the area, there. Let me find a ring in the hole. <laughs> so what do I? So it sounds like the consensus is just exclude metal detecting altogether. Um, do, do any? Does anybody do like um, heavy magnet like stuff in any of the water? I haven't seen any yet. No. Oh, okay. We have one for our own property retrieval needs, but I haven't seen anyone like try to magnet fish off the beach or anything. Okay. I'm sure it'll happen tomorrow now that I've said that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Wait, is that legal? Like at Golden Ponds? I mean, you can't do anything. You're not supposed to take anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To get some info. If someone takes trash in it, if they pull a shopping cart in there and they want to take it with them, if it's in a geocache at the bottom, that's good. As long as it's not the ammunition. Right. So Recreation's permitted. Okay. <laughs> Do you realize that rabbit hole you're down? Is every attorney conversation with Rangers happens at like every? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why our attorney's office looks loves us? Yeah, yeah. 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 it's not like the police. <laughs> These are like the ones where it's like a. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else on that one? I don't think so. Seems like, yeah, it seems like the consensus was just the room that I don't but yeah. the permit and the get these make sense. Okay, so this one, um, we would like to remove line 13.20.090B that currently allows overnight fishing at Union um, if you have purchased a pass and are a holder of a fishing license. Um, that's been the rule since I started here, since we've started doing operating hours and closing the gates and kicking everyone out. You can no longer stay overnight, so this is just removing that from right from the yeah. okay. We've only okay. had one person say, "What it says here, I can stay overnight." Well, our operational hours are going to supersede this for now, so you got to go. Could we do special events though that would allow yeah, the boys can stay overnight? Yeah, yeah catfish. Yeah, yeah, there's a special event you could mm -hmm. implement for that. Well, could they snap it appropriately? Yeah. So that's just removing, if you hold a state fishing license, you can otherwise stay. Once you get it going. Okay, this is the last one. Um, staff would like to introduce a fine schedule for the violations within 13.20. Um, this would create a clear a ability to clearly understand what the consequences are for violating everything in Chapter 13. Um, basically, right now, if I write you a ticket and you say, well, how much is this going to cost me? It's up to the judge. That conversation can go one or two ways sometimes. If I can say, it's no big deal, this is a simple park violation, it's gonna be a $100 fine. That sometimes goes better for me, people like to know what to expect. Um, my hope is this keeps us out of the courts as much as possible. Um, I don't wanna tie up the courts with a whole bunch of dog off leash tickets. I'd rather people just say, yep, I have my dog off leash, it's on camera, I'm gonna pay my $100 and move on with my life. That's my hopes. I'd prefer to not have you going into court when we have three Rangers, right. that's fair. That's right. Right. Yeah. Really it's, it's the Rangers and the courts that judges yeah. have seen all these all these really tickets. Good. Yeah, again, Price gave it a good example, but you know, um, Price and I coming from the kind of system we had it set up, we had that fine system that it was more of a certainty for the individual. Um, it helped with the conversation. But anything else you would add to that? And um, yeah, no, I think people like to have transparency and and have had his knowledge of what is going to happen. And I like as a ranger public servant to be able to provide them that information so it's not this big scary unknown sometimes there's sticker shock depending on you know what county you're working for mm -hmm. um the county you work for at very high fines um we're trying to find a, a middle ground that's effective but much more equitable currently as bryce said we write someone a summons it's a mandatory court appearance they have the right to a jury trial it's a fine of up to 500 dollars and a certain number of days in jail uh, at the discretion of the judge, the likelihood of them going to jail for a parks violation is zero. Um, but it's uh, you know maybe not the tool for the job for most of these kind of petty offenses um, that we are tasked with dealing with. And sometimes you know we're educators first and foremost as rangers, but uh, a ticket is an educational tool when everything else has failed, our signage, our outreach, and everything uh, else. 
So we want to have the right tool for the job. And a, a pay ticket is, is generally a, a more fair consequence, uh, we feel, and, and I'd say that a large sample size of, of the public would agree with that, uh, as opposed to this big unknown of you're going to have a date with Judge Frick and he will decide what that fine amount is and telling someone that the potential consequence for this offense is jail time um, dramatically escalates our contacts and you know we are well trained as rangers but we didn't get into this to you know be in adversarial dangerous interactions with people over frankly very petty behavioral issues that we're trying to deal with so this is one step in that direction and it's also been something that we have heard from the courts that um, they want to deal with the kind of congestion of our tickets that, that unfortunately sometimes occurs. So trying to save the kind of higher order offenses that we deal with within public lands for that you know, mandatory court and higher fine amount, um, but putting the large amount of um, offenses into this standardized $100, $200, $300 structure. The only thing I add is we're not taking away anyone's right to go to court. Right. If right. someone doesn't agree with that ticket, they can say, I want my time in front of the judge. Whereas right now, you are you know, required to take that time off from work or whatever it is to show up and say, potentially, yes, I did this. I take responsibility for it. What is the dollar amount that I have to pay now that I've entered my guilty plea? Um, so we're trying to inconvenience people the appropriate amount for the behavioral change that we're trying to affect in as equitable a manner as possible. And there'll be a tiered system if you get you know, the end, is that right? So for a vast majority of these chapter 13 violations, it'll be $100 for first offense, $200 for second offense, and third and subsequent offenses, a fine of $300 up to $500. Um, and then we've included some of our higher level ones because we don't want destruction of property or fires in public lands to be just a $100 fine. Mm -hmm. um, so we've set those aside as higher level events and the fine amount is up to $500. So those are the specific ones that we pulled out to say these level of violations under these codes have this um, penalty. I've been wondering if you've seen a lot of uh, uh, you know, like target shooting and stuff like that still. Um, less than when I was hired three years ago. Um, there is a lot just over the invisible line into the National Forest. Um, it's probably the most popular area to do recreational shooting in Northern Boulder County is the Johnny Park area just outside Button Rock. So, you know, this is, we're hoping that this reflects the gravity of the offense, the potential for damage to our watershed, to public safety, as well as the higher risk that we take on as rangers when we're contacting somebody when you see these offenses, right? You've got hunting, firearms, um, shooting, target shooting, things like that, um, that we're taking on when we're making those contacts. That if someone walks away with $100 at a fine after shooting a deer in a park, that you might just go and do it again. Um, so we're trying to address that um, kind of appropriately. Um, but yeah, luckily we've been seeing less. So that's that's good. It's progress, um, but I definitely contact people with firearms up there. But most people are you can lock with a firearm up there. And, uh, you we do not allow people to open carry in our public lands. You can conceal carry with the state uh, or with, with your concealed carry permit, um, or if you are a police officer in you know um, act, enacting your duties, but. Um, we don't allow people to open carry firearms in our parks and public things. Good. I have two questions. Um, first, I think everything you guys have said makes sense. I don't think the text that's in here makes sense, though. In that I think the first, like, A to me is still the language around the judge imposing a fine, mm -hmm. not you guys imposing it, you know, as a ticket, which is what we, I think we should do. Um, just clarifying that that's a discretionary fine for a ranger to impose. Is that that's the intent, right? No, we don't have this. I mean, it's the judge is the authority. Um, so this is just this is just giving some guidelines as to what the judge will charge. So they still have to go to court and do all these things. Ideally, and what I've done in the past is you have two options. You can either pay this fine before your court date, or you show up on your court date. 
if you do neither, then it's a failure to appear. We've got a whole lot of other issues. So this is kind of the legal framework, and then we'll have to work out the procedural okay. end of it with the prosecutor and the judge. Um, currently, on the back of your uh, summons that that you would get from a ranger, which is the same summons you get from a police officer, mm -hmm. there's information that says that 14 days hence, you can call this number listed and discuss your summons and enter a plea. And potentially, we tell people, like, you might be able to resolve it at that time. Um, I think often people have still been required to have a mandatory appearance. So this is a... This is laying the groundwork for what we would hope would be a quicker resolution to a ticket that someone would get um, for a park regulation violation. Okay, and then it's the responsibility of the city and the police department to record for second, third offenses, that kind of stuff? Yeah, that's all through records, it's pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. And then for the more, usually even if we miss it, like in the field, like I had no idea that Price wrote you this ticket two weeks ago, they'll catch it at court and be like, yeah, it says 100 on your piece of paper. But it's really too money because of this. I see. Right. They resolve in court. And for the more serious offenses, they would then have the option to let, let me that fine to have that That makes sense. Which is the current. So currently, the fines, the kind of violation section for all of Chapter 13 2 it would look like that second bracket. So that's currently yeah. what the consequence of any, whether it's a bounce house. Yeah. Or your dog off leash, or your shooting, your, you know, your firearm, and gold ponds, it's all the same. So we're trying to calibrate that to a more sensible. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. So yeah, I've used a, a system like this before, and it worked really, really well. It kept everyone out of court for the most part. Um, as long as us as rangers are writing good tickets, you're able to stay out of court. If you write a bad ticket, then yeah, you should go to court and defend the ticket you wrote. But, um, I'll speak for myself. I'm good at if I'm going to write you a ticket, it is 100% earned. Um, and I didn't go to court because everyone kind of shared, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was still a good ticket, and he had to pay his fine. But um, I'm, I prefer to explain it to you in the field hey, here's what you did wrong, here's what the rule is, here's the penalty. You have your options. If you think that I'm in the wrong and you don't deserve this ticket, please go before court. We live in a country where you have that right. If you want to plead guilty and just want to pay your hundred bucks and live on with your life, you can do that as well. So it's their choice. One final, well, maybe a bit more, but one one additional question. Uh, so you mentioned earlier about the uh, the fine, how you came up with the one hundred two dollars in the first ten pence. Um, you mentioned that it was equitable. Have we done research into what fines from surrounding areas that would be? Are they on par? I mean, what are we, like, are we, are we, are we, are we the median, the average? Yeah, so state law it, um, defines the fine structure for counties, generally speaking. Yeah. So like Boulder County, for instance, or any, any county ranger can only collect up to $300 um, per offense. Um, looking at like Jefferson County, Boulder County, uh, we're probably a little bit lower fine amount for that first offense. Um, you know, there are, I, I think I was seeing in the $250 range and up, but I think we're, we're trying to find a, a baseline that covers, that's the best fit for the majority of offenses. Um, and also recognizing, you know, our intent to be equitable and trying, yeah, trying to find that, that kind of lower uh, order, you know, uh, consequence for a lower order offense. That makes sense. That's all. And we can tell people too, you know, well, you're lucky that you're talking to a city ranger, not one of those mean rangers across the line. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 it's they're only hundred dollars versus three hundred. Sometimes that makes it go. A I can put in a plug in for these two. Again, that sort of looking at different ages and stuff. Uh, Price and Bryce both are involved in COSA with the Colorado Open Space Alliance. They presented those things, they're involved in all this training. So these conversations are part of, you know, usually annual conversations about what agencies are doing and how they're trying to, you know, address some of these equity pieces, how they're trying to do some of those higher level pieces. So it, not only are they just doing the research, they're networking a lot all the time to make sure that we're kind of staying consistent along the front range. Thank you for that. Yeah. Any other comments on this number 12 here. 
Is, no. is there just a, an action that we are supposed to take? Next step, yeah. A, you read re- re- my mind. So, with this, this, this feedback, hopefully it was helpful Absolutely. to you. Um, is there anything we can do to support you as the, as the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board as you assess this out further? No, this yeah. is like well, so important. Oh, okay. I just yeah, that's going to say if you want a motion that you know that what I what really really kind of heard is that that they are supportive of these with pulling the e bikes and with some of the language we'll go back and look at the the shape there's some of the language changes and other ones so that if anything that we go forward that doesn't reflect that would make that clear but hopefully what we do is take this to council now where you know this is as presented to to have in the way that they supported it then was that for the two of you work. Yeah, as uh, I think we'll, we'll reference the no, the minutes from the meeting, but yeah, e bikes, the metal detecting, yeah. I think some greater definition of yeah. hazards there activities. A couple of things yeah. that we said pull them out. Pull them out of the right. category of storage. Yeah. yeah. I do too. So I think yeah. I have a motion to trash and storage items. So it'll be a convoluted motion, but yeah. Yeah. I don't want to entertain a motion that expresses. I'm just thinking that, you know, kind of as amended by, you know, with the recommendations by by the board that we would take that forward. I don't think we we're opposed on that. No, I would, like Bryce said, it, and we really appreciate your feedback and getting a, another set of eyes on this. And this is something that we've workshopped with two different attorneys over the last two years. Um, and it's nice to have some, you know to interrogate that a bit and get a diversity of perspectives on it. So we appreciate the feedback. I'll make a motion to uh, to um, <laughs> to adopt the proposed municipal code changes as presented with the um, revisions and changes that can be reflected in the minutes. So, a second for that? Second. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to go all your time. No, it's great. No, I mean, you're the only thing that you know. So it's good. I mean, things here, like uh, designation of meeting game time and stuff like that. I think I'm going to let you guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then. I've got. First day of class tomorrow uh, with students, so I'm. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, thank you. Appreciate your time. I think that that's probably more your your business. <laughs> I'll be here. Who would welcome it? Uh, you tell me when I'm supposed to be here, and I will be here. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm so happy to be back on this uh, this committee. Uh, I really do love this board. Great. I want to see you guys successful. Uh, so. Yeah, I brought my cards with me, so I'll give you a couple of them to you guys. If, uh, if you too, for sure. Does anyone claim them? So yeah, no, just <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's you, all you guys. I appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys are great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on with new business. Designation of meeting day and time. So as part each each year we have to go through this. This should take a very little time. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you okay with still meeting the second Monday at six thirty? If so, I just need a motion for that. Is there a motion to keep the minute meeting day and time the same? Second Monday at six thirty. Yeah. Make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. To designate the meeting day and time of uh, Prab to be the second Monday of the month at six thirty. Thank you, Scott. Okay, okay. okay. we have a second for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All there. All right. Look at this. <laughs> Cruising right through. Can we have to do these oh, we've done this in one. You, you one can. One. can. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want to make sure. That okay. Let's do it. All so, in one yeah. motion. All right. So, there's two more. So location at Parks Building, and and that doesn't mean you can't Thanks, meet at other Thank you. Thank you. locations throughout the year, but this it would be our primary location, and that our posting would be done on the city website. We also send out to 
uh, a few city facilities, but the official location will be the city website for notice. So I could have a motion on both of those items. Yep, I'll move that we designate the uh, Parks Building on Sunset Street as the official meeting location and continue posting crowd agendas on the city website and at the physical locations as previously approved. Each to it. <laughs> All in favor? Nice motion. Awesome. Great. Okay, last. Jeff, anything else on that? No. Good? no. Okay. Last item on for new business is discussing the 2024 Crab Agenda calendar. Is there something in the packet for this? No, there wasn't. Okay, okay. okay. I, I apologize, but I do have something else. Oh. And, and this is just more for conversation, not necessarily that this is what you have to do, yeah. but they're the same thing. Yeah. Um, but just wanted to be able to start out the conversation, and I filled in some of the things that we've done historically during uh, the year. I, the one thing we haven't done for a while is have recreation staff come in and share uh, things about aquatics and special events and would like to do that this year and and then at the very end I had some other suggestions that you might consider if you don't have uh, other things and again you can just grab this you can no. oh, okay. so I had a just I had made some notes on things and I was hoping that we could have um, discussion on several of the things like, you know, what are we going to do about the maintenance on the current rec center? You know, what do we need to do for sort of the future of the ice pavilion and programming? You know, what are the thoughts around Centennial and, and pool? You know, just the sort of result of not having new facilities on the horizon. So I don't know if that fits in with what you have kind of sketched out. I think it potentially could, but yeah. I think that might be, you know, kind of an ongoing conversation. I don't know what the plan is to for council to uh, you know it's too bad council and recording that to talk about this, but um, if that's something the city is planning. I agree. I think we're gonna just like lay out all those different topics as soon as possible to see where we're at on them. Although I guess some of them you're probably tra tracking closely and can't do much about is the problem without yeah. these things passing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's also good to... Well, some of them are budgeting items, though, and if yeah. you know, we're going to come yeah. into budget season, if we want to make any recommendations about... Yeah. I, identifying those so that you all understand what issues we're dealing with, I think, is very important. And so, we, can, we can start that conversation in February, I proposed the ice rink means, but we can broaden. I think that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah, just do all of them as part of that. Like large recreation needs, basically. I mean, and honestly, this is just like how do we sustain what we have and not yeah. go backwards? <laughs> yes. It's somewhat similar to the capital improvement projects conversation, though, right? I mean, it's maintenance focused. Yeah, but generally we don't get into that level of, of conversation with right. general CIP conversation. It's bigger, higher level kind of thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think this is more about, you know, somewhat vision at least for, for these functions, recreation in particular for the city for the next at least three years. Yeah. I'd also like to propose... Um, communications we um, like how how we um, we talk about like the wings we talk about I mean over the course of the year we keep on getting frustrated that it's like this, um, residents don't know you know what we're doing well at um, and, I, like, and so there's there a whole other conversation about the website as a much bigger thing yeah. but I think um, you know just in communications in the whole there's a policy or way we communicate um, how we can help and possibly impact communications, I guess. Just you know, my a couple of things again I did mention, mm -hmm. I think at the end said there's a new web page design and I volunteer to be on that group because oh yeah, pray the forward. So maybe as we do those updates, maybe I can have that someone from that team come and help me perfect get information directly from you. 
the other piece is there's another group out there that's called Longmont Indicators that I think is going to do a, a good job of helping with some of the things about showing what our goals are. And again, some of those goals for me is challenging because we started doing this in 2008, 2000. So Longmont's done a lot of stuff before we started these indicators. So I think going back and really showing what we've done, because some of these we're on the margins now, which gets harder right. to achieve. So yeah. um, I, I think maybe having Francie come in, if you'd like to hear about the Longmont indicators and how we're, we're doing that, would be something that would be useful to Stephanie. Yes. Would you agree? I would agree. Um, and that's kind of a work in progress since right. the beginning of that. But reporting back a few years. So. I was also thinking about um, using Engage Longmont better. Like I came across that as a transportation staff I had found. And that's still like the direction the city's going and engaging. Like I think we could get some parks and rec things on there where people are having questions or want to even get feedback from people about the other park locations. It's like already a city platform where we just don't use it, I think. Thank you. A couple of other things. One, I didn't see, you did a great job actually. Gosh, I love things. So I don't know what else. Uh, but I didn't see the Thorn partnership and sort of the development and the vision. And so I just want to, I mean, stay up to speed on that. That'd be so good. When would be good, good to like plug it in as a specific topic? But in the packet you said, Taylor's coming back in February. Yeah, yeah I think Taylor's. Well, she'll be doing her end of year and update as, as we do that, that piece yes. there. Yeah. And I think the other thing was that if there's key pieces, I think that was just more flowy because it, it won't be a one time conversation. Yeah. It's just kind of a commitment yeah. for me that as we make progress, there's other things that Taylor is committed to showing up and talking about that. And then the other things I had written down. Um, was that sort of forest health work at Button Rock. Um, the open space, if, I don't know when, I can't keep track of the timing, the reauthorization of that open space funding. So is that is that, going to be 30, 34, no, I'll be that far out, maybe. I'll, no, so you guys don't, that's not upcoming. No, for some reason I thought it was inspiring. No, yeah, yeah the, the reason that I think for, yeah, 34, so, yeah. Um, for us, it's that ability to have in place something that allows us to, to rebond and do things out there too. So even the closer you get, the harder it is to rebond because your window's closer too. So um, it's something I think that members of the community can share that they would like to get something moving sooner than later. Um, I think if this group would like to start talking about it, I think we would like to, to share thoughts on that too. So. Whenever it's appropriate, okay. I'd like to. So I'll leave that up Thank to you, you guys. And then you had the recreation master plan on yeah. here, which was the other thing I was wondering. One thing I remember from last or this past year was the capital improvement stuff, and I think that is earlier in the discussion in this schedule, which is good. I thought that we yeah. talked about it, we're like, it's too late to do anything. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 so something on my calendar, Tim Waters said yeah. you must, like, yeah. yes. when is it? Yeah, it was like, drop in yeah. it was good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, usually we, the yeah. system closes the end of April, first part of May. Right. Yeah, so it's on the calendar. Yeah, yeah, it's a different thank you. Yeah. Any other comments? I, I noticed here that on February, it says 2023 in the calendar. Um, is that a continuation of this discussion? Yes. Or, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. We don't need to actually formally adopt this calendar up front. This is more just no, discussion. It's just more of a, an understanding. So we Got all those. kind of, yeah. And I, I think the, I would just say the facility needs would, I would probably move to March. I will not be uh, here at the February meeting. Okay. Will that be, my only concern is about the budget. We'll, we'll be all right to budget wise, yeah. <laughs> What's that? What are you doing on Tuesday nights? Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Well, we can have it. Ben can cover that, but I. No, I think it'd be good for you okay. to be there. Yeah. So we should have our budget recommendations by April, is what he had said. Yeah. And we should be talking about it in February. Yeah. Okay. I, I think if we cover and make a decision in March, you're good. I, I think. The, the key is how you're going to communicate that to, to council. And, and one of the things that the, the city manager did with the uh, senior services advisory board 
last year is he actually came to one of the meetings mm -hmm. and that might be something that maybe at the April meeting we invite him to come and he hears what you all uh, want to recommend based on what happens in March. Uh, Sounds great. Like Let's that. put it on his calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Make it there. happen, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just means we have to be really be prepared. Yeah. Right. With, yeah. yeah. In the March meeting, we have to be have yeah. a good yeah. consensus. Um, there's something about eight and five in here. I guess we just handle that as part of package that's, updates. But. That's yeah. Stephanie is willing to show up. I think most meetings right. and give updates on that. But if you like a more formal presentation, we go through your bit. I think you'd be surprised by the end of the year. Great. I hope I'm not surprised. But no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 One of the things the board's going to want to talk about is we got all these new parks out there, making sure that timber and operations has enough money to take care of what we just invested. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. and additional programming as well. Yeah. Anything else on here? There will be an opportunity to raise agenda items in the future. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not yeah. 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 Come up during the year that we'll plug in as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, the only thing I thought of that we could probably just do in discussion, but maybe worth focusing on is like long term trails planning. There's been, a, I've, I've heard a lot of things like Steve mentioned things in meetings, or you mentioned things about like we someday want to have a trail to Terry Lake and do something out there. Like, I think it's really interesting to know that the city has this long term vision of that. I think it's embedded somewhere on sub page 77 of some master plan. <laughs> but I think it's a really cool vision to put out there that okay. we could be supportive of or suggest, you know, prioritization of that uh, the public doesn't want to know about. Yeah, I think that's one of the pieces too that we, we talk about the e bikes and transportation. I think transportation has some of those as we look at some of those, you know, Longmont to, to Lyon sort of pieces too that's probably on right. with their vision plan as well that we can get that sort of, you know, us collaborating to, to show the. Yeah, we still know we don't know and we'll be there all over it. Yeah. We have a coordination with complementary boards in September. Would that be? Perfect. Yeah. Or bring that earlier. Yeah. But it's something that's the theme of that idea. Yeah. Could the Parks and Trails Master Plan, so that's currently located, which yeah. you can't find on our site. Right. No? What'd you say? No, no. Well, yes, yeah, no. <laughs> <It's, laughs> yeah, I think it's a challenge. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, I've made my thoughts on information already. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know working on this. Yeah, it's, it's. All right. <clears throat> if there's nothing else, then we can move on. Uh, discussing items from the packet updates. Any do you have any uh, questions about the packet updates? Scott. I have, I have two quickly. Um, dry Creek synthetic fields, there's references to the meeting. There's is there a, meeting a date? Tomorrow, on Wednesday it's on 6.30. Wednesday. It's posted on the website on the Dry Creek page. Um, and it will, it's at Alton Middle School. And it will discuss, it's an inform on the lighting that will be provided installed at the field. <clears> it's also, um, we have a project manager coming with the, resort, with the Isaac Walton project, the levy project. And he's going to speak directly to the sledding hill. And then um, we'll have several people there for whatever questions may come in. Cool. It's neat to see that the school district is helpful about having a meeting when it's not oh. during the election. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. also post it to those folks that are not as much as they want to or interested. So. Um, my other question was uh, Dry Creek Trail, number one. Uh, there's a reference to uh, the meeting on January 3rd. Um, was there any progress? They're still working. There's, it's more hopeful <clears throat> that there is a resolution to still construct the trail without having to move the trail. Um, but it has not been finalized yet. Okay. But it's more hopeful. Okay. David, I don't know if you want to add anything. It, it will be completed. <laughs> it will be so. In our lifetime. Yes. <laughs> Some of us are older. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 
So you're saying Paige's lifetime. <laughs> I was just going to ask the Olander thing we reviewed, something that's all going forward. Council was supportive. Yes. Yeah, and just figure stuff out. That's great. Very quick movement on that. It's good to ask it, Daniel. doing a great job. Um, I, the land inventory map topic has been the same for I think a year now in the updates. Um, I would be happy to help on that first of all, but also, but also if we just get an update from them on, like, for example, I was looking just yesterday, I was trying to find out the name of a trail at Sandstone. There's nowhere to find that, unless it's an open or closed trail. So I think it's, if, if we're not doing it, let's take it off the, the updates, but if we are doing it, maybe we can get an update from them. It's, it's one of those pieces out there that has so many different groups that have different interests and ideas mm -hmm. what that map should look like and who's taking the lead on it and what we need to get done first to answer some of those basic questions to what you know our public safety group wants as far as the information they want for addressing mile marks on trails. It, it, it does bog down, mm -hmm. but it's one thing that I'd, I'd like to keep moving forward on. So, We'll have some sort of either be dropped or you'll have something next time. Sounds good. Stephanie, do you want to talk about anything that you're doing with that one? Or I, I didn't about? hear the question. Oh, I was just saying on the, the public, public lands map that we've oh. had, a, we've had on the, on the uh, like monthly it's, update for nine months, the same two sentences, same work. And we haven't it. updated my right. yeah. team. I didn't right. know if it was a Daniel's team or anybody else's. Yeah, it's one of those pieces that, yeah. you know, there's just a lot of people that are, are working on it. Yeah, so yeah. that's what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. That brings up the trail really doesn't have different names. Uh, for example, I was trying to find out whether the Greenway ends at Golden Ponds and the Lincoln's Gulch Greenway starts there, and there's not, you know, or, or in Sandstone, is the trail from the top of the hill down to the visitor center have a name for other reasons? But there's no um, map for Sandstone, even. Like, there's no map of the site of Sandstone. Uh, it's just something that we don't do a lot of in the parks. I actually have like local maps of the exactly. park. And I was looking on some of the outside maps even today yeah. because I actually had a council member saying they were getting lost on our trails in town. So I, I was trying to see if there's something out there that's better. I don't know if your group has anything they recommend for people trying to bike around the, the community. There, there are a lot. There are tons of maps. I know that's the, that's and that's the thing. The thing. It's, yeah. Keeping Boulder County has one that we work with them. Given our data, they they do that, mm -hmm. and then they update all the communities within the county. But mm -hmm. I looked at that and did I didn't feel like it had everything either. So, yeah, there there doesn't seem to really feel like there's a good one that someone could just have their phone on and it would right follow a map that you could mm -hmm. use. It would be great if somebody did that outside of like Strava type of right. What's nice about it is that, um, my last comment I promise, is that if the city puts that data out there, all of those companies like Strava and Google will take that in and make that part of their maps yeah. if the city publishes it properly. Okay. So like, it's not your job to make a city of Longmont trail routing app. That'd be crazy. Right. But because there's no data, it's coming from public guesswork, basically, at this point, of what's out there, what's available. And so if you were able to put data out that shows these are the trails, these are allowed uses, this is the surface, that'll all get read into all these apps. I have no charge to you at some point. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. So there's even like things like on Strava. They, there's a lot of private people who have created like the Longmont Loop, and right. so it's like there's a there's a little extension and number. We have this thing where we have um, you know our public outreach you know, tables or whatever. They're like oh, if you want to follow Longmont Loop, write this one down. Go on to Strava. Go and find it, and then you could put it in, and then it would route you around. You know, <laughs> the, the, do the Longmont Loop. But there's no really great way of doing that other than that. Or sometimes we used to have QR codes that you could scan and switch you back over to that. But it's uh, but really it would be cool if the city created all of those, so it doesn't look like it's owned by you know Chris Burke I made mean, right. this route, and you don't know right. you know if it's ever being maintained or if that's actually the real route or the poster of his house. Or, yeah. yeah. So thank you. So. Yeah, Tatiana on our team, and I didn't understand where you were going with all of this, but on the wayfinding, it's big, and there's a group that's being put together to really take a, a holistic look at wayfinding in the city on these trails. Um, but she's got some great ideas on where she's come from. Lots of different means and methods to really improve that experience, as also to get us the information on who's using it and how many people are using it. So oh, yeah, yeah. it's a part of um, 
one of her big efforts this coming year. And so I'll talk to her about this performance. Okay. Any others? I just had one uh, for under forestry. It says that there's, for 2024 planning, over 300 trees have been reserved. My only question is, is, is this uh, more, less than um, previous years? I think that's right around the same number that right we have there. Yep. That's typically what we, we do, but I'll, I'll double check. The same way. Yep. Just because I remember. It's been hard to get them. In. Yeah, it's, it's been hard and they go fast. I was going to say, I feel like I've noticed in Old Town where I live, a lot of trees were cut down this year with, for, for good reasons, um, like more than previous years, and they, not all of them were ground, and I don't think all of them have been, are being replanted. And some of that, I asked the city about it, and they said some of that's because of new spacing guidelines they have. Right. But I, I, some people have asked about, is this tree going to be replaced, or are they going to grind that stuff? I think that's a timing and sequencing and contracts thing. Right. And I didn't know if those three were. Right. That we can uh, go ahead and put on our... I'll talk to Brent about how we can maybe help that because I, I do, that's a question I get a lot as well. So there's a way that we don't have to keep repeating that as a easy place for people. It's one of the suggestions that Jeff had on there. So that's a good yeah. topic. Is like, how does forestry work in this? I asked you that question. Yeah. I was going to say, Jeff just asked me too. <laughs> yeah. And again, it really, the branch group, it could be new spacing things. It could just be a place that we've had trees and they just don't do well there, be it soil or irrigation. Mm -hmm. um, some of those spots where you get you know, snow plows throwing salt up on those areas. So if it's a tree that is in our inventory that meets our standard, we will put it back into inventory somewhere, but it may not be in the same spot. Yep. Can I ask you uh, I'll, I'll do it later. Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's related. Out of curiosity, just like, this year, years, <laughs> years ago, we expanded uh, Pike Road, right? And I had a, a, a bike lane that's there, and we took out like eight uh, trees or something that was there, and that was cacophony of people from, um, what's the feedback since that's been done? Oh, that's one of the questions. I, I don't know. I have not got to like. I've never heard I've anyone never got complain any. since nothing. Uh, yeah. That it, all of a sudden, the cross bar gets so much louder because those eight trees are so much louder. No, I have not heard anything. Okay. Do you have to right? answer that? Yeah, Phil might be able to. So yeah, Jim Anger. Yeah, Jim Anger. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, two of the seven. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, these trees, those trees. They're, they're yeah. about to go build a bunch more parks there, so <laughs> <Right>. exactly <laughs> other problems. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was going to be like chaos will ensue because right. Yeah. 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 yeah, Jim Angst I could check with too. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I jumped again. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, items from staff. I was going to say there's a community meeting. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 she waited all oh, night. Oh, I was here for the whole night. He's your home man. <laughs> So I'll say um, Oligarchy Bridge um, that we have slated, they did start construction today. So there's yeah. areas around there that are that trail that's blocked off right now. And it'll be that way through the middle of the year. It's a pedestrian bicycle bridge. That's all I have. Okay. I have a question about the meeting. This happened with the Thompson Park meeting that was great and happened in Central School. It wasn't in the city calendar. And this one's not either. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to check with if there's a way to get maybe the new website will resolve that. But I'll have to ask. Yeah, I think it's on, they're on the websites that you guys maintain the little sub pages about that project. Right. The Our city communications calendar. team does that. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask the communications team. They should know how or if we can add things like that to the calendar. The procrastinating team fiber club is there. Procrastinating, but not this meeting, which we have <laughs> out there. Procrastinators made it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it'd be nice to have on the, on the calendar as well. So, say. Items from the board that haven't been already discussed? <laughs> nope. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll, add, I'll add one. It was a, a good note. I have uh, two new employees to start today, and both of them said great things about uh, Matt, they, uh, Macintosh. Like, you know that there's a lake up in Longmont you can go to for free, and you can go <laughs> uh -huh. paddleboarding. Uh -huh. And they're like, I'm like, oh, so yeah, so what, what do you think about that? Well, we always like follow it up with like, Grabbing a beer in town. I'm like, okay, well, at least you're spending some money in town. Uh, we'll get you some help. So I was like, yeah. We're or using our public Right down to the Yeah. Yeah, much yeah. yeah exactly. So. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with that, 
Does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Sure, I'll move to adjourn the meeting. A second? I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> I, all right. Sounds good.